This is where I thought things got interesting. And this was a welterweight fight. And I, I talked to George about this. And it, Brandon Thatch uh, defeated uh, Paulo Thiago. Uh, and, Brandon and what Thatch I, is nasty. He is nasty. Um, the, the interesting thing about this guy is he's won now his last 11 fights. His first fight, I believe, he lost. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure someone will. But, uh, but, but Thatch is a big motherfucking welterweight. Not only is he tall... But he's big. He's big as fucking shit. And you see how big these welterweights are getting. And I'm like, wow, man. If I'm just, I just, everybody's dropping down a class now, George. Have you noticed that? Everybody's like, fuck this. I'm dropping down. I'm yeah, dropping. Yeah, figuring People out someone, someone, in my opinion, has come along and shared the secret of the weight cut. Because let's face yeah. it, we, we've looked at who, who was the guy who left? Uh, the real Anthony Rumble Johnson. You're looking right. at a guy who, once he left the UFC, he mm -hmm. fought at heavyweight. And mind you, he got down. He was fighting at 170 at one point, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was fight. He was all sucking weight down the welter, and then he went to middle, and then and then he went to light heavy to heavy. He just went bam, bam, bam. He went up three weight classes so in a matter of just, like a half a year. That tells me somebody has found a secret. Now, I, I let's face it, this is an interesting sport when it comes to drugs and what can be used, can't be used, what you can get exemptions for, and what you can't. So I'm not going to sit right. here and throw out any accusations or strange things. But some of us are a little more familiar with the drugs like Lasix and, and things like that. And I'm not talking about the right. eye surgery. Um, you, yeah. You can, you, there's, there's, salt, I mean, you can do that stuff, and you can take salt baths and suck a lot of weight. I mean, you can suck seven or eight pounds in a night easily, easily. I so mean, I know I do wrestling. You can do that. Easily it, do that. But and, and not only that, but you're watching these. It, it's one thing to cut weight and, and, right. and come in weak. And, and non-responsive. Look at Jake Shields. When Jake Shields made that initial weight cut, it, it was horrible. Right. He, he couldn't, for, rumor was he had to get helped out to the stage. We weren't there. We don't know. Like I said, rumor. Um, but right. it's different when you see a guy like Machida cut weight and destroy somebody. When you see Paulo Tiago up until this point cut weight down to 170 and was mowing through people and then he just absolutely mm -hmm. got destroyed. Uh, I, right. I, GSP has got to be taking note of this and these smaller, and now, Mind you, there aren't too many small guys running with the belts anymore. These are usually bigger right. guys who are sucking down weight or just making weight. And GSP's right. never been that guy. He's always fought at 170. He's never gone up. He's never gone down. His only option, in my opinion, would be able to cut weight. He can't go up. He'd have to cut no, he if, he, well, if he wants to stay thing. fighting. Well, yeah. And back 10 years ago, people were like, oh, come up. You know, you, you, you're a welterweight, you jump up to middleweights and fight the competition like Anderson Silva did, like a lot of people who were middleweights moved up to light heavies did, light heavies moving in. But GSP kind of stayed in the welterweight class. But now in this day and age in MMA, people are like, I'll come to you. Because they, they feel like it's so competitive in their weight class that they've got to drop down. And now you get all these big-ass motherfuckers dropping the welterweight. That was the case with Brandon Thatch. He's big. He's tall. He's filled out. And he's knocked out. He's won his last 10 fights all by knockouts all in the first round. That's some scary shit. You know? Yeah. And you could say, oh, he hasn't fought anybody. I don't give a fuck. If you're finishing everybody and he went right through Paulo Tiago, it's not a pushover. He's a decent MMA fighter. He's, uh, yeah, he, he's I'd a say well he's a hell of a ground tactician who's learned uh, some stand up. I mean, he's, he's, dis he was dismantling people at a buck 70 and he ran into a buzzsaw. He ran into yeah, a now, very big, very young kid who just pulled, picked him apart. Right. And, and he, it was considered a submission because basically when he, he kneed him so hard to his body, he went to the canvas and then, you he know, him and he never. He did. He hit him hard, Holmes. And so he just tapped out. So, it, I mean, it goes down as a submission, but I'm going to tell you what, if he did not tap that fucking canvas, he would have been snoring in a couple seconds. That's a, that's without a doubt. Now